Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's day 376, and that brings us to Psalms 54 and 55. This is a three-year reading plan, and the Psalms are sort of sprinkled in throughout, so we're a little bit more than one-third of the way through the three-year plan, so we're a little bit more than one-third of the way through the Psalms. And uh, we generally take things one chapter per day, but the reading plan has us doing two Psalms, or sometimes three Psalms at a time, sometimes only one. Uh, I like the variety of this plan. We go from Old Testament to New Testament and sprinkle in Psalms and Proverbs. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we look to Psalms 54 and 55 today. Heavenly Father, please be with us today. Please be our teacher and our guide. Thank you for the gift of your word. Please write it upon our hearts. Please help us to hear from you what your spirit would say to us. Please help us to know you better through your word today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Psalm 54. It is a psalm of David. It's to the choir master with stringed instruments, a maskil of David. Maskil generally means teaching psalm or instructive psalm. When the Ziphites went and told Saul, is not David hiding among us? So what we can learn from this psalm is how do we respond when we are in trouble, when we are in danger, when we are trapped, when we feel overwhelmed? Uh, because David's in a serious situation when he's he's really trying to protect the Ziphites, but they tell him uh, David's hiding among us. Oh God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. Oh God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Selah. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from trouble and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. So that is Psalm 54. What do we do when we're in trouble? We cry out to the Lord. That seems like a sort of Captain Obvious answer, but how often do we actually do that? Or how often do we try to fix things ourselves, try to make things work, try to manipulate circumstances, try to figure out a way out, and then... If all else fails and we absolutely can't manipulate, control, scheme, plot, plan, then we turn to the Lord. David is called a man after God's own heart because that's not what he does. He doesn't do that. He turns to the Lord. What does he ask? He asks for the Lord to save him and vindicate him, to, to hear his prayer. He confesses that God is his helper and the Lord is the upholder of his life. We have no help but what comes from the Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. Every bit of help we receive in life is really from the Lord. If we belong to him, we are in his hands and we need to trust him. We may be in danger, whatever that danger may be. It may be from slander. I've been slandered before, part of being in leadership positions within any organization is that you're probably going to be slandered. People are going to second guess your motives. People are going to say mean things about you behind your back. People are going to question you, challenge you. It's part of what happens. I've never been in a situation like David where people were hunting me down for my life, but maybe you've been slandered. Maybe someone's gossiped about you. Maybe someone's spread rumors that weren't true. That hurts, right? That old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie, right? Words can often hurt worse than sticks and stones, especially if they come from people we've trusted in and who are talking about us and spreading lies about us. That can happen. Maybe the trouble comes from a cancer diagnosis or some chronic illness that is debilitating, or maybe the trouble comes from a family conflict 
Many people, we've come through the holidays and we're into a new year, many people are breathing a sigh of relief that they don't have to be around their families for a long period of time because being around their families is very stressful. I'm thankful that that's not the case for us. We have uh, been blessed with good families that we enjoy spending time with, um, but many people don't have that. Many people uh, dread family gatherings and it's just conflict and turmoil and then you know they can't wait to get away. But whatever the situation is, if you belong to God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God has already saved you from your greatest enemies, sin and death, and he will rescue you. And so David looks in faith. He says, with a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you and I will give thanks to your name, O Lord. And then he looks forward and says, you have delivered me from every trouble. And my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. I believe David wrote this before he actually saw that deliverance, but he is by faith anticipating that the Lord is going to do this. And so he's looking in faith upon what the Lord has done. Psalm 55, another masculine of David, written to the choir master with stringed instruments. We don't get a life circumstance background for this, but it comes from David's own life. One of the things we can learn from the Psalms is that when God brings us through something, the benefit and the blessing of that should not be for us alone, but for others around us. And so we should learn to take our trials and our triumphs, our struggles and our uh, rescues, and turn them into opportunities to instruct others. And that's what David does for us in the Psalms. Give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and I moan because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness. I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and tempest. Destroy, O oh Lord, divide their tongues. For I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls, and iniquity and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. For it is not an enemy who taunts me. Then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me. Then I could hide from him. But it is you, a man my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together within God's house. We walked in the throng. Let death steal over them. Let them go down to Sheol alive. For evil is in their dwelling place and in their heart. But I call to the Lord, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them. He who is enthroned from of old, because they do not change and do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smooth as butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. Psalm 55, uh, 
You know, Psalm 55 verse 22 just reminds me of something real quick before we move on. And that is when verses are taken out of context, we often miss the full beauty and truth of them. So you may have seen Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. That's a verse that people might quote. They might put it on a coffee cup or a t-shirt or on a, you know, verse picture image meme type thing. But taken out of context, you might think, well, if it means he'll not permit the righteous to be moved, then I'm never going to be disturbed or troubled by anything. I'm never going to be shaken. I'm never going to have problems. But in the context of Psalm 55, we see something better than that. And that is, even when we have the worst of problems, even when we have the deepest of anguish, even when we go through the most severe of trials, the Lord sustains us. So that in and through those things, we are not moved out of his love and out of his care for us. So Psalm 55 is written in one of the most painful things. So in Psalm 54, David was being hunted down by enemies, by Saul. Now, David had served Saul. David was a loyal soldier to Saul, but Saul had turned on him and Saul was hunting him. Here, he's dealing with a close friend and companion who has betrayed him. Someone who was once a fellow pilgrim and has turned on him. Now, we don't know the circumstance in David's life that might have given rise to Psalm 55, but we do know the circumstance in Jesus' life that is ultimately the fulfillment of this psalm, and that is when Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. Judas was Jesus' close companion. They had walked together for years of ministry. Judas was the money keeper. He was the treasurer for the disciples. He was one of the most trusted, closest companions of Jesus. And yet he betrayed his Lord for money, for silver. He betrayed his Lord for earthly gain. And That's a hard thing to be betrayed by a friend. And yet in that, while David is really agonizing, he does the same thing that he did in Psalm 54. Betrayed by a friend, hunted by an enemy, he does the same thing. He cries out to the Lord. Verse 16, I'll bring up to the top of the screen. But I call to the Lord and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. <laughs> I love that. It's just God is the one who redeems us. He, we cry out to him all the time, no matter what the source of the trouble is. We need to look to him. Jesus did. Ultimately, all the Psalms point us to Christ. Christ, we know, would go away for overnight sessions of all-night prayer. He would go away early in the morning to seek out a desolate place where he might be by himself to pray. Jesus sought the Lord, his Father, earnestly in prayer, regularly, faithfully. And he was delivered out of all of his trials. Jesus suffered all the same trials and troubles that we do. He was pursued by an enemy. The rulers of his people who should have protected him and who should have seen his faithfulness instead pursued him like King Saul pursued David. Jesus was pursued by the Sanhedrin and crucified under Pontius Pilate. And then just as David was betrayed by close companions, Jesus was betrayed by Judas. He suffered in all the ways that we suffer, and yet without sin, because he always sought his Father. He always trusted in the Lord, and he was brought through the trouble. And that's ultimately our image. When we get back to verse 22 that I quoted at the beginning, looking at Psalm 55, it's not that God saves us from being in trouble, but he saves us through trouble. 
Jesus went into the grave before he was resurrected. And we will go into the valley of the shadow of death and through the valley of humiliation and through troubles and trials. The cross precedes the crown. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your faithfulness to us and thank you for your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you for his salvation. We praise you for his faithfulness. Help us to be like Jesus. Help us to have a heart that seeks you no matter what we are facing. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, that's Psalm 55 and 56. Hope it was a blessing to you. And I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.